Now this is a very interesting topic. Why do people in the Middle East have some of the lowest rates of cancer if you compare this to the entire world? Let's do a deep dive. Now if we take the average of how many people get cancer in the entire world, it's 198 people out of every 100,000 people who get cancer. Now if we take a look at individual parts of the Middle East, we have Saudi Arabia where 96 people get cancer out of 100,000. Yemen, 97 people out of 100,000. Oman, 1 of 4 out of every 100,000. Qatar, 107. UAE, 107. And Kuwait is 116 people out of 100,000 people get cancer. So you can see if you live in these countries, you have much less risk of getting cancer. Let's compare this with Australia. 468 people out of 100,000 get cancer. Australia has the highest number of cancer patients per 100,000 people. Number two goes to Ireland with 374 people out of 100,000 people. The next one is Hungary, 368 people out of 100,000 and then the United States. 352 people out of 100,000 people develop cancer. So what is so unique about the Middle East? Well, the number one reason for this is fasting in the month of Ramadan that extends over the course of one month. Ramadan is considered a type of intermittent fasting only for one month and produces a tremendous decrease in rates of getting cancer. That's quite remarkable. So why does fasting help with preventing cancer? Well, it starves cancer. Do you realize there are between 10 and 50 times more insulin receptors in a cancer cell versus a normal cell. What does that mean? That means that cancer cells have a very greedy hunger for glucose because they have more receptors to eat glucose. So this is how they diagnose cancer through a PET scan. A PET scan identifies areas in the body that have a very high metabolism of sugar. So cancer loves sugar. And when you are fasting, you are not consuming sugar. The second thing about fasting is it stimulates autophagy, which is a condition that helps to recycle old damaged proteins. It helps to recycle old damaged things like damaged mitochondria and if you look at what cancer really is, it's damage to your mitochondria. When you fast, you kick in this autophagy and you're recycling damaged mitochondria which are going to decrease your risk of cancer. The third thing about fasting is that when you fast, you generate new immune cells. You strengthen your immune system. Your immune system becomes stronger. You generate more killer T cells which directly kill cancer cells and viruses. And you also stimulate your more helper T cells which indirectly help reduce cancer. The next point about fasting is, it's one of the best things to get rid of inflammation. Cancer tends to spread into areas of inflammation, so fasting is one of the most potent anti-inflammatories. So it's going to reduce the risk of cancer being spread. Also, when you fast, you increase the antioxidant networks of the body. So that's going to decrease the risk of getting cancer right off the bat. Fasting is number one and number two would be the spices that people eat in the Middle East. Turmeric is located with anti-cancer properties and it's one of the best things to get rid of inflammation. Saffron has a certain phytonutrient that's very anti-cancer. Cardamom also has anti-cancer properties. Nutmeg, cinnamon and coriander all have anti-tumor and anti-cancer properties. Plus on top of that, certain foods that have additional anti-cancer properties are black seeds, olive oil, dill, sesame seeds and dates, which are commonly used in every home in the Middle East. Yes, dates do have certain phytonutrients that have anti-cancer properties. Number three is low tobacco usage among women in the Middle East, not men, because it's probably increased, but among women it's significantly low. Take a look at this. 20% of the population smokes, that's one out of every five people. 
Yet, if we look at women in the Middle East, in Iraq it's 3%, Yemen it's 9% compared to 20% worldwide. And then we have Kuwait, which is only 3%, Saudi Arabia 2%. The UAE has 0.8% of the entire female population. That's very insignificant compared to the worldwide average. And then we get Oman, 0.7% compared to 20% worldwide. Now if we compare that to women in Chile, it's 40%. That's more than two times the world average. And then Serbia is 41%. So smoking is definitely linked to cancer. You already know that, in fact. The risk of getting cancer if you smoke or chew tobacco is 22 times higher compared to people that do not smoke or chew tobacco. 25% of all cancers out there are caused by either smoking or chewing tobacco. And the other thing you need to realize is there are 5,000 different chemicals in tobacco and cigarettes, and 70 of them have a direct link to cancer. Raping also is linked to lung cancer because of the nicotine and other chemicals. And the fourth reason is that alcohol is prohibited in most areas of the Middle East. Drinking alcohol increases the risk of six different types of cancer. And if you drink alcohol, you are more at risk of getting cancer of the liver and also of the oropharyngeal area, which is the area in the back of the throat and also includes the back of the tongue and upper roof of the mouth. People in the Middle East have the lowest rate of getting cancer in this area of the body. The areas of the world that have the highest risk of getting this cancer are Western Europe, Northern Europe and North America. One important thing to note is that Islam has prohibited the use of alcohol and tobacco and at the same time, it's obligatory to fast in the month of Ramadan. The Holy Prophet also encouraged us to fast on Mondays and Thursdays as well if possible. Islam is the complete blueprint of how to live successfully in this world and the next. Its commandments not only benefit us spiritually, but also physically and mentally. May Allah open our hearts to the truth. Ameen.